Hi, I'm John the Engineer, great Canadian gambler, Taj Professor of Poker Systems Engineering, and I'm quoting from page 36 of my book, Play Hold'em Poker Like a Bookie, on the rule of four, Hold'em's Greatest Leak. Now, if you go on the internet and you search the how to play sites, they'll teach you that to estimate their chance of winning, many players use the rule of 2% per out on the turn and the rule of 4% per out on the flop because there are two chances they hit, not just one. A four flush draw on the turn using the rule of 2% is worth 9 times 2%, 18%, 4 to 1 against. And on the flop, the rule of 4% says it's 9 times 4% equals to 36%, only 2 to 1 against. Thinking a second card on the turn makes it a 2 to 1 draw on the flop with even more betting to come is one of the biggest leaks in Hold'em. I know, I blew loads using the rule of four in my youth before I had checked the math. I would re-raise or cap with three other opponents thinking it was a 3 to 1 overlay on my 2 to 1 draw plus one third. Then came that pesky bet on the turn which the rule of 4 fails to account for that could force me out without my second card if the pot did not offer good enough odds. Without a free turn card, the odds needed on the flop with two cards to come is always the same rule of 2 as on the turn. Capping with 3 to 1 Needing 4 to 1 is a 1 fifth 20% leak. Accepting 2 to 1 when needing 4 to 1 is a 40% leak. So, with more betting to come, it is almost never right to use the rule of 4 in limit poker or in no limit poker or pot limit poker if you have any more betting to come. Away from the book for a moment, you're playing pot limit and you have this hand, you're four flush and your opponent bets. You now have, he bets the pot. So you have two bets at you, you're getting two to one and you say, whoa, I'm a 1.85 to one, therefore I got myself a 5% overlay, I call. Thinking you have a slight overlay. Next card doesn't come, now he again bets the pot. Well, now you're only getting two to one again. What do you do? You need four to one, you have to fold. Nothing you can do. You never had the second shot. Now let's go back for a moment and consider what happened when you thought you had your 5% overlay on the flop and you put in that pot. Well, you're sitting there thinking you're getting 2 to 1 and you really need 4 to 1. So that in 5 plays, you're going to win once, but you're going to lose 4 times. So you win once, 2, two lose 4 times, negative 2 fifths, 40% leak on that bet. Huge! Blackjack players fight for a 1% advantage on a bet. And here are people playing with the rule of four, dumping out 40% disadvantage, thinking calling that pot bet and getting two to one as a slight overlay on his 1.85 to one bet. It's not. Back to the book. The rule of four also says that an eight out four straight draw is two to one. On a turn, um, it's five to one, an even worse leak. Capping when you're getting three to one, but needing five to one is a two sixth leak, 33%. Calling for two to one when you need five to one is a three sixth leak, 50%. Two steppers don't use the rule of four, which I will only allow when there's no more betting to come. So don't call it the rule of four ever again. Call it the rule of all in. Now let's go over case A. Say the pot has three bets and our hero wrongly calls with a double draw to his four flush because his rule of four says he's two to one while getting a three to one overlay, 33% he thinks. But getting only three to one on the actual four to one draw is really a 20% underlay costing him two bucks on a $10 bet. On the turn, a new double bet offers six to two, three to one instead of the eight to two, four to one, necessary to chase with a four flush, and the rule of two now says that he must fold. So there are cases in limit poker where you can be forced out on the turn because the pot isn't big enough. If you use the roll of four on the flop, it costs. Calling for three to one <clears throat> with a four to one draw costs 20% of the $20 turn bet, $4. Now that's two dollars and four dollars thrown away in a 10-20 game on two underlay bets chasing a four flush draw that almost no one has a sense to fold. 
costly on the flop and costly on the turn. I don't mind chucking a four flush when the pot doesn't offer four to one odds. Just last night, I was heads up in a hand with two blinds, and the guy bet out, and I had a seven deuce, but I'd had a four straight with eight outs, and I turned it up, showed it to the people as I folded, and they sat stunned. How could he fold, you know, when I'm getting two to one on my money? Maybe you know, three to one, but I did. Say the pot is four bets, and our hero properly calls with his nine out four flush draw. Facing a two bet on the turn offers only seven bets in the pot, not the required eight to two he needs. He must rightly fold or lose one tenth of his twenty dollar turn bet, two bucks. Here, it's right to call on the flop at even money, and it's right to fold on the turn, avoiding the two dollar loss. KC, say the pot is five bets, and our hero calls with his four to one draw, getting a twenty percent overlay. On the turn, he's facing a double bet with exactly eight bets in the pot and realizes it's a break-even situation, so it doesn't really matter whether he calls or he folds unless another bet one is implied. Sometimes I fold a break-even hand to let an unskilled player win a pot and stay in the game, or call if my catching a long shot will make the other guy go on tilt. But usually there's no choice. Pot odds and outs determine chase and usually nothing else. With any overlay, I must draw or lose an expected gain. So you cannot use the rule of four and take half odds on the flop if there is more betting to come. You must use the rule of two. If you do use the rule of four, you're losing money as in case A on a regular basis. And it's even worse to think a double shot five to one two way straight draw is also a two to one shot on the flop. That costs you 50%. Because you can be pushed out by a bet on the turn, you must get the required five to one odds for the next straight card, unless there is to be no more betting to come. That is the biggest leak that I've seen in all of Hold'em, and it's taught religiously in many sites on the net. And that's why when you can get up with a guy who's going to just cap it because he's got a four flush, those are the guys you want to play with as long as you never do it. So on a final point, I'll say that over the last two years, I have only had an opportunity to raise with a nine out four flush twice, where I got the required four callers in the pot before me to make a raise at least break even. Only twice in two years. Think about that. And straight, I don't remember the last time, because when you have this kind of a draw, you want to keep people in to pay you when you hit. Besides, if the guy bets and you call and everybody else folds, on that particular bet you were a big dog, even though you must call because of the bets in the pot that are backing you up. But you're still a dog and you'd have been better off with no bet at all. So there it is. The biggest leak in Hold'em is the rule of four. And all they have to do is change the name of it to the rule of all in to correct the misimpressions. Um, John, the Taj Professor of Poker Systems Engineering, betting that this is absolutely the biggest leak I've ever seen, and I've been playing for 30 years, so think hard, get into it, and stop making this huge mistake.